Okay, our next presenter today is Isabella Souza Sierra from University of Texas at El Paso. She, the title of her presentation, this is a mouthful, you, you're working me. <laughs> Integrating hydrologic and machine learning models to predict lake water temperature profiles and release temperatures throughout the Red River Basin, USA. Okay, hello. Uh, as you say, I'm Isabella Sosa Sierra, and I'm a grad student of the University of Texas in El Paso, and today I'm going to present some results uh, with my advisor, David Jess, who is here. Thank you so much for your support. Um, about how to integrate hydrological models and machine learning techniques to understand water systems, basically. So uh, I'm going to start with a motivation uh, of why we want to make hydrological models. And we want to make a hydrological and calibrate a hydrological model for the Red River Basin. There is a really crucial hydrological system in the southern of the United States. And they are essential for making informed decisions regarding with different key factors like reservoir fissures and stream flows and societal water needs. And also, um, machine learning techniques could be applied to enhance hydrological modern performance that I'm going to explain how can we relate both of them, machine learning and hydrology. Um, third, um, accurate water temperatures predictions lead to more effective water management uh, tasks. Um, like, for example, reservoir fittership um, tax um, and optimize size, like reservoirs, inflows, and also ensure like water supply for different systems. So it's like a, a really uh, big uh, thing that can make like a tool, right? So, and lastly, um, the social integra successful integration of machine learning into hydrological models has potential uh, to revolutionize like water resources planning and how we are making decisions, uh, not just like in the Red River Basin, that is my study area, also we can apply it to other basins uh, by different uh, approaches, right? Um, so what are the objectives of this um, research? First is to develop and calibrate a hydrological daily model in, um, in a software called WIP, that is Water Evaluation and Planning System for the Red River Basin. Second. We want, to, we want to explore how machine learning uh, can help us to predict temperatures in, in lakes and reservoirs uh, for uh, find the, pre, the temperature releases and vertical profiles. And third, we want to explore how to incorporate the machine learning techniques into a new variable of a, um, of a developed hydrological model WIP uh, to enhance in, in its capabilities uh, for better water resources management and planning. So after like this introduction of why we want to do this, uh, I want to present this to the area. So in the pictures, you can see the Red River Basin. The Red River Basin we see in the map to the right. Um, there is a really pre, uh, it is a big area between Texas and Oklahoma. And um, it starts uh, at the, in New, in New Mexico, and it, it finished in the Mississippi River, and it is a major tributary of the last one. So we can see also the dots that are like the main reservoirs. Uh, they have different purposes, starting like for water supply, for diversions, and for fishes. And also it's the far longest river in the United States, and it, it has like a really different, um, diverse climate conditions. Uh, we are really um, market gradient to the to the west, that is dry, really dry, to the east, that is wet. So in the pictures, we can see the Red River Basin in Texas, then in Oklahoma, and then in close to Louisiana. So we see like the ecosystems are really different and the amount of water that is in the river too. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how we, want, how we achieve it, what we wanted to achieve. Uh, so I'm going to start with WIP, um, model of the Red River Basin. So WIP is a sophisticated user and friendly tool that is, has been usually wired around the world to define water management parameters, right? So uh, it is allowed like creating uh, scenarios. So here uh, I have my WIP model. I know it is like a busy map. <laughs> it has a lot of components, but it reflects how complex is the system in the Red River Basin. We have 90 catchments, catchment means like sub basin. So we have like a, the big one that is the Red River Basin, but we have like a small watersheds into the systems that we have 90 catchments. 
We have also city one rivers. We have some uh, groundwater systems uh, connected by the um, blue lines. Um, and we have also uh, some uh, United USGS um, observe, 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 gauge, observe, observe gauges, right? To calibrate the stream flows. So like this is how it looks, like how we build the model, right? The conceptual part. So we have the hydrology, right? We have a watershed. Uh, when uh, then we want to what? To join the water hydrology, the watershed hydrology with machine learning, right? So we are going to uh, join these two to find what? The release temperatures for the green dots that I showed you before that are like the reservoirs. So yes, yeah, so main goal, hydrology, machine learning combined, a, a new variable for in the WIF system is what we want to do, okay? So uh, a key advantage of this methodology is like we can incorporate climate projection, projections, sorry. So you're asking like why we want to do this because we can incorporate like new uh, climate scenarios and see how the water releases are going to be in the future in the difference. And we can track the flow, right? From the west to the east. Okay, so now talking a little, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the how we made the hydrology. So in WIP there is like a, a method called soil moisture that it is like a one dimensional two compartments or bucket uh, soil moisture that account um, empirical equations to find the surface rain. So we have different inflows that is going to be the precipitation. We have also irrigation and we have outflows like ET. Uh, we have um, some equations for the base floor and interflow. So um, in the parameters that we see here, like for example, the root zone conductivity, the deep conductivity are parameters, parameters that we use it for calibrate our model. Because we, as I told you, we have like 52 observed stream flow gauges. We were able to calibrate 25, and we are still, something that I'm going to talk later, but we're still working on that, right? So with these sole parameters, we made manual calibration to find the best fit uh, for the model versus the observed. So in the next image to the, to the right, uh, we have the conceptual flow model that someone made for the Red River Basin. Uh, so we can see like uh, the interaction between groundwater and the base flow of the stream that is the main one, the Red River Basin. So it's like a general concept, but I'm going to explain later some funds we got about it. But yes, so then I'm going to, I'm going to explain a little bit about random forest that is the technique that we're using. So uh, we have uh, six different uh, training uh, features for our model, right? So we have air temperature, we have solar radiation effective, precipitation for ET, like volume, water in inflow, and measure depth. So what is machine, what is um, random forest? It's um, a machine learning model that allows us uh, to make decisions based on regression trees. So it makes like it makes like kind of questions and it goes by paths. So at the end, so like for example, when you put a new training data set or you put a new data set to um, find the prediction, it's going to uh, ask to each node that you see the dots. So it's going to add, oh, is this, con is this condition met? Or it's like, is that idea? So, oh, this is condition is met. So I'm going this path. If not, I'm going to the other path. And then I will have like an average of predictions. The average of prediction is good because it reduces the overfitting. So it, the model is not like kind of replicate and it's learning. So it's like a, a really good method to, and have been used for a lot of tasks in water management. So, yeah. So, and, and all, all final goal is get what? The water temperature by depth. Yep. So now I'm going to talk about the results and discussions. So um, I'm going to start with an analysis about the renal coefficient. But what is renal coefficient? The renal coefficient is the relationship of the amount of water that is from precipitation that become like runoff, basically. So when we have like renal coefficient close to zero, it means that there is no surface runoff. There is no water, right, in the, in the stream. Uh, but if we have like higher, higher um, runoff coefficients, our water is becoming like uh, runoff in, in the surface, right? So w one interesting thing is w that we found out that uh, starting to the west to the east, there is like a trend when the renal coefficient went almost zero uh, until it was uh, almost 0 0.5. So we can see in the precipitation climatology map over the Red River Basin, 
that uh, we have at the west, we have really dry conditions compared to the, um, to the east part of the basin that is wet between Louisiana and Arkansas. So what we want to say with this is that calibrating this hydrological model was really challenging, like, because it's not just like one hydrological system with these conditions. It's just like you have a lot of like soup conditions into a really big basin. So, so yes, so this is, yeah. Um, so some, I'm going to present like some results uh, about the calibration of the hydrological model. So um, I want to focus on two. One of the uh, west part of the basin, you can see in the map the, the white dot, it represents a, a dry point. So we can see that the metrics, the Nash coefficient and the KGR are positive. They are no more than 0 0.5, that is the value that we want to get to say, oh, this is doing good, but they are positive and the bias is low. So it's what we want to get. And also we can see that the Renault coefficient is almost zero. And in the, um, in the graph, we can see the observed versus the model stream flows. Uh, uh, yes. So now I want to show you the difference between a uh, wet point, that is the Caddo River. Uh, we can see that the performance here uh, is higher, like we have a Nash coefficient in KGA almost 0 0.5, that is the good value. Um, and the bias is less than 5%. It means that this system, like this kind of wet system, can be better model uh, in terms of the, our method uh, so far, but we still need to continue working on this. Yes, so uh, real quick about the machinery performance. So remember, we had like air temperature, solar radiation, precipitation, volume inflow, and depth as a, as a training or as an input to get the, the temperature uh, release. So in this plot, in this scar plot, we can see the performance for the random forest model. We see like good statistics. We see that all the values almost fell down between the 10% error bounds. And also it's good to know that in the next um, graph, we have the residuals, the errors. So a good, uh, a good goal in, when you're modeling water temperature is like have errors between minus five and five Celsius degree. Here, uh, they are between minus two and four, which means that the model is having good performance. So after all this, our key point is this, like how we can integrate hydrology plus machine learning, right? So um, you're looking in the image, like the WIP um, user interface, right? So we spend a lot of time trying to figure it out how we can make a script because WIP is just, a, you can just like write scripts in Visual Basin and Java. So it has like the Python theme, but it required work, right? So um, here, it's just like I show you uh, the code and how we, in red, we can see the, how we call the function that we created. And we can see in the next image, like how uh, the model is going to simulate the water temperature by changing the climate projections. So it means what? The model is making water predictions in temperature. We need to improve it a lot, of, but it, it is working right now, right? So uh, we, we, we saw that the, now the system has the ability to track like hydrology, um, reservoirs, water temperatures, and one key point thing here is like, this is a Windows-based model, right? But these type of models are the tools that people around the world use for water planning because these tools are open, are like uh, user-friendly, um, you can understand easy, so it's how water management is been doing along the world. Um, yeah, so I think I finished it. Um, I want to make a, like a summary about the research. So first, we developed and calibrate a daily hydrological model WIP uh, for the Red River Basin, and we also explore uh, random forests to integrate machine learning into the WIP ecosystem, and we successfully integrate this a model into the hydrology, and it can be done for water management, planning, sorry. Uh, future work, a lot of validation and stream flows. We need to validate because we have the calibration, right, for some gauges, but we need to validate them. The validation period has to be one that we didn't use, so 2010 to 2020, 
and also the wire temperatures observations. We need to validate the wire temperatures, the machine learning model, we need to validate it. Calibrate the reservoirs. So we have 38 reservoirs, we need to calibrate all of them. And also the additional stream flows that we didn't calibrate because of the amount of time. And for the machine learning model, we need to improve it a lot. So we need to add some variables like wind, and depth, and also the, the climate uh, variables needs to be averaged by seven days time step. And yes, that's all. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for, to Jerry for giving me the opportunity to be here. It was amazing, my amazing mentor. Thank you so much, all my friends. It was a really nice experience. Thank you. Thank you so Good luck with questions. I think she answered them all along the way. <laughs> Good job. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah. Sorry, Jerry, I'm in the wrong side of the No, you're fine. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that presentation. That's really great. Um, can you explain to me, as someone who doesn't know a lot about water management at all, um, the release temperature, I understand that that's the temperature profile of the water that gets through your river. How, how is that used in water management? Like, how, what do we use that for? I can imagine that people would want to know, like, a volume of flow or availability of water. Like, what exactly is the temperature used for, do you know? Yeah, like, for example, uh, we, the main goal is, like, the vertical profile, right? So with the vertical profile, we can make like planning for fishing, right? Like, oh, how these species are going to survive to these temperatures and ecosystem, things like that. So we, we call it this like water release because I, I don't know, I need to like to, I, I don't know how to, I need to probably draw, but it's like uh, the profile, I don't know how to do this. So the profile, right? So we want to see like the model, we want to create the variable that makes like some physical, so it's going to be at that point how much water that I'm releasing from the reservoir is going to be the temperature, but it's the vertical temperature. Oh, this depth, right, is the release depth, but it's going to be the vertical of all the reservoir. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. I guess I, I didn't expect the water temperature in a river to be that variable, that it would Oh, it's impact, for reservoirs. Um, it's going to be for, like, the water that from the reservoir, the temperature I'm giving to the river. Okay, okay, I get yeah. that, thanks. I'll say they, they strategically release water from a reservoir to meet a downstream temperature target for fisheries. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah, okay. I did not understand that. Thank you so much. And... Why should I repeat? <laughs> <laughs> we, so we, they make, a, they make, a, they make <laughs> a release, they, they release at a specific temperature to meet a downstream temperature yeah. target. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they make a release temperature from a reservoir at a certain elevation in the reservoir, a controlled release, to meet a downstream temperature target for fisheries. So the fisheries. Yeah. You know, cold water fisheries. Yes. <laughs> if I may ask another question. Um, you talked about the runoff coefficient, and you said it was the ratio between precipitation and... No, so maybe can you Sorry, repeat the, that? The, 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 the stream flow versus the precipitation. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why did you decide to use random forest instead of another method for machine learning? Okay, so we, we explored, like, I, before this, I explored some methods for water temperature. And it was the best performance between support vector regression, uh, LSTM, and uh, gradient boosting. But um, the LSTM, there is like a, is a neural network uh, method, was we wanted to use it because it was it has like a, a close performance uh, to the random forest, but we were we weren't able in, into the whip environment. So we are using random forest because we got the best performance basically of the other models. Yeah. Any other question? Great presentation. Um, my question is, so it, going back to your results, a lot of your data is from the late 1990s to about 2010. Yeah. And I was just wondering if, like, um, you're trying to find, have you considered finding a way to verify those results with observed data that may have been collected um, instead of predicted? And if so, like, 
I mean, it may be not even be accessible like for those years. So I'm just curious if you've thought about that. Oh yeah, I, we will do a liability validation between 2010 and 2020. So this is like the calibration data, the calibration times and the validation is going to, we already have it. So we need to do the validation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting work, Isabella. Thank Have another you so question? Much. Any other Good. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.